the first thing we're going to do is start with the base blade file. If I say new project here, it will remove this stuff and keep the same settings. And I can import a new STL and we will import the tip. And it comes in laying down. So the first thing we need to do is stand it up by rotating in the X direction by 90 degrees. Just like before, we're going to make three instances by clicking here and setting the number of instances to three. And we're going to rotate the next two instances by 120 degrees. And we'll go to instance three and rotate that one to 240 degrees. Previously, we had moved these parts until they touched each other but with the upper blade parts they'll you can make them touch at the bottom but you can't make them touch up higher where they need to touch to self-support each other because of the way that the blade is shaped um, if you were to try to to move this so that it would it would touch in the middle of the blade it would it they just end up poking through each other to deal with that problem i have created a disposable part that I call the trailing edge support that will touch the trailing edge of a blade down at the bottom and then it'll touch it again about halfway up and then I can size this part to made up with the three blades and then import that into Prusa Slicer as a fourth part and it will print all at once and give us a, 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 a self-supporting object. So to do that, let's go back to Creo. This part, I need to move it so that it touches down at the bottom and then I'll adjust the shape so that the size of the upper triangle and the twist of the upper triangle touches the blade halfway up. So let's make sure that the height of this part is set correctly. This part is based on datum planes. So let's turn that on. This distance on this one, this datum plane is 87.5. And that should be 175 divided by two. It is, okay. So the height is already correct. Now let's move back over to the assembly. We're going to move this so that it touches down at the bottom. And so we go in here to this redefinition. We redefine the placement. I believe that I can just click on this and drag it. I can. Okay, so let's look at the bottom view. I should be able to click here and say bottom. See if that worked. It did. Okay, so let's move this part until it just touches on the bottom right there. And now at the top, it's just a little too big. And it looks like the twist angle is a little bit off. So now we will modify this part by coming over here and modifying this sketch. This uh, triangle is inscribed into a circle. So we'll make the circle smaller. Let's make it 40 and see what it looks like. Yeah. So that looks about right. And I should be able to change the twist angle so that it touches it. Let's try that. Um, we'll make this 14 even. That's about right. Perfect. Okay, so that just touches there. It just touches down at the bottom. Let's move over to that part and save that part and then save it as an STL file. And we do it using the same settings that I always use. There we go. And let's move over to Prusa Slicer now and import that part. So we'll say import an STL bring in the trailing edge support, stand it up on its end like that. And we'll position it with respect to the first blade. Let's move these two out of the way. 
and we'll rotate this one until the bottom triangle approximately lines is aligned with the bottom of our blade. So if we rotate, we'll rotate it like this, and now we'll move it like that. And instead of looking at the top, we'll look at the bottom view. We'll take it and we'll just touch it like this. And then if we slice it now, okay, I got to move these blades back within the print bed area. So we'll move those like that. Let's zoom back in. And if we slice this, let's see what it looks like. So it has trimmed back the point off of the off, off of our support piece and it's also trimmed back the trailing edge off of the uh, off of the blade so we're going to need to move the triangle part so that it it really pokes into our blade let's slice it again and see how close we are i can't quite tell from this view if we're touching nope not quite so we need to move it just a little bit more. Yep, there's still a little bit of a gap. So we'll look at the bottom view again. If I come to the X and the Y position here, if I move this to be like 151.25, see what that does. We'll change the Y to 110.6. There, perfect. So now it just kisses at the bottom. And let's check the top. And if we're lucky, it's also just touching at the top. Also. Okay, it's a little twisted. Um, and the reason for that is that I must not have this twist angle matching the Creo assembly model perfectly. So what I need to do is come and twist this part until it touches both the top and the bottom. That looks pretty good. Let's try that and slice it. It's more important that it's supporting at the top than at the bottom because these parts down at the bottom are sitting on the bed. So it doesn't need to be, it doesn't actually need to be touching at the bottom. It's more important that it touches at the top. Um, I like it to touch all along the trailing edge, but it won't do that unless the trailing edge of our blade is a straight line, and that's not the case. So I'm going to look at the top view, and I'm going to position this part. I'll use the Y offset to move it down. Let's make this 110.4. Okay, that looks nice. And let's move our handle down and see, yeah, so in that region, they're touching each other nicely. I may even move the X direction just a little bit less. Let's make it 150.8. Okay, let's check it with our handle. There, so we've got, we've got a good number of layers where, where they're touching each other. That's good. So now I can position the other two blades so that they are touching this part also. Okay, there's the first one. And what I've done is I've moved it so that this intersection looks a lot like this intersection. It may even need to be more like this. Now it looks like that that moves it off the bed. So I'm going to need to move all of these things as a group more towards the middle of the bed. The bed is narrower in this direction than in this direction. So with this blade tip being up and this blade tip being down, they're too close to the edges. So I need to rotate these so that these two blades are, are sort of horizontal and this one is vertical. So let's rotate this in the z direction by about 
let's say 50 degrees. Let's say, let's say negative 10. Okay. Now we should be able to move this as a group like this. And let's give it another five degrees there. Let's go back minus one. Okay. So now we have lots of room between these two tips. And then when we move this one down to meet them, we should be okay. Okay, let's check this one. That looks good. It touches for a few layers. Let's check this blade down here. And it's also supported for a few layers. And let's come over and check the first one. Good. Okay, so they're all about equally supported up in the middle where it matters. This is what it'll look like when it's printed all the way. And I'm gonna save this to catch our settings. Now on the previous print, when I printed it, it printed in purple up to about 104 millimeters and then it ran out. And then it resumed printing with yellow. Now normally when I print these blades, I prefer them to print one solid color all the way out to near the tip of the finished blade and then have the blade tip to be a different contrasting color. But because that plastic ran out, my base part has two colors in it. So I'm going to make my tip part have two colors in it with a matching transition point. So to do that, I'm going to change my printer type up here to be, a, instead of an MMU2S single, I'm going to change it to MMU2S, which will give me the option to change colors. So the first thing I need to do is slice it like that. Now I can drag my handle down to 104 millimeters, which is right about there. And I can do a color change. And the way that you do that is you click left and you change the extruder to extruder 2. There. Now when I print this, the blades will match. The bottom one will have a solid color and then a stripe. And then the upper one will have a solid color and a stripe. The print wipe area where it transitions between the two filaments prints in this little patch that's down on the bed. In order to make sure that your print head doesn't hit your blades, you need to make sure that this area, sort of this two by two block is clear. You don't want your part to be in that area. And in fact, what I'm gonna do just to make sure, just to give extra clearance, is I'm gonna shift this whole pattern over here to the left a bit. I'm gonna select all of these pieces I'm going to move them over to the left. Now on this print, there are some embedded details up here near the tip where we transition from the spar to the fasteners that are going to hold on to that spar. I'm actually going to embed a washer and a screw in the end of this part. There is a layer height where the hole that comes up is the diameter of the spar. And then at a certain point, it transition and it opens up to the diameter of a washer. So here's the thickness of the washer. I need to put in here a pause. So it's going to print up to the top of the washer. Now I need to put a pause in here. So I add a print pause right there. So what it should do is it should print this this tan color it's indicated in the in the slicer software with tan it will come up and it will stop right here and then after the after the pause it will come back and start printing with the gray i think in reality i want that pause to be one layer higher so i'm going to come here and left click to delete the, that mark and i'm going to go up one more layer and that's where I want to put the pause. 
So I right click and put a pause right there. Okay, now if I'm lucky, I did this right. If I'm not lucky, it's going to actually print this layer like this, and I'm going to have to kind of carve away a little bit of this gray in order to get the washer to go down in place. I just don't remember which it is, unfortunately. Okay, now we're going to roll this up until we get to the top. So it's not a big deal if I make a mistake on the washer one, but if I make a mistake on the top one, it's gonna print all of this, this material, and I'm gonna have to cut it away to get my fastener in place. I don't want that, so I'm gonna pause it right here. Add print pause. There. So now my part, if I slice this, it's going to print up to the top of the washer. I'll put the washer in place. Then it'll print up to the top of the screw. I'll drop the screw in place. And then it will print up to the color change and it will color change automatically. And if you have a printer that doesn't have an automatic color changer, you sort of have two options. You can either just print it all in one color or you can change the filaments manually if you want to do that. So this is my final configuration for printing. Let me save it, save the project, and I will export this G-code. And it looks like it's gonna take a little bit more than 11 hours to print. Let's go get this print started and see if we can't finish this project up.